Our first stop was at Newport News and the Mariners Museum where they're building a new extension for the USS Monitor. We were lucky enough to actually go back and take a special tour of that brand new wing and see the actual recovered remains of that ship. stern first, so we said, well, she slammed 220 feet down, she slammed in the bottom, those two blades broke off. I, Jeff Johnston, who is one of the curators here, he works for NOAA, uh, went to a lecture visit this past week, and Jeff said, no, that did not happen, because the pieces weren't there, he's been on the wreck, and the pieces are not there. It happened before the mod was sent, and then someone more intelligent than me in engineering asked him, well, then why wasn't there vibration? I was like, yeah, this thing is not, this thing's out of balance. He said there was only 52 revolutions a minute is what they did that would create any vibration that you would notice. So they probably, that's an accident, they did so. But you wear hard hats. Now, for you ladies, we have a choice of colors. We have white, <laughs> and then we have white with white dots, and then white with white stripes. So you can make a fashion statement. <laughs> You will not have it on long enough to give you a bad hair day, I guarantee you. <laughs> at Arlington, or I would have buried it home, whatever, then a decision would be made, I don't know by who, probably by the U.S. Navy, where they'll be buried. Uh, hopefully, I, I hope it's here. Uh, they should be with their ship. Um, there was speculation a third man was on board, was in his hammock up forward. Uh, Jeff Johnson, if you ever seen the TV things on this, the man doing most of the speaking is Jeff Johnson. And he is, he's the man. And I went to one of his lectures this past week, and I asked him about that. I said, you know, if they find another body there, the Navy's going to shut this site down. It's a graveyard. You can't touch it. I'll show you the truth. Everybody out? Everybody see? There it is. See it? Okay. That's the gun turret. It's hard for me to see. Cause I'm down this okay, the turret's a little over 20 feet in diameter, 9 feet high. It's 192 pieces of iron bolted together, bolted and riveted. It was eight inches thick. They had a shutter that would close one gun port while they were loading the other gun. So they would have to run the rammers in and out. They could never actually fire both guns at the same time. If you've ever seen the movie Ironclads, uh, it's a Ted Turner uh, piece of trash. Uh, <laughs> the battle scenes are fairly realistic, except or at two points. At one point, they had the monitor firing both guns at once. That couldn't happen. So the shutter that swung back and forth and closed the, the opposing gun port. And they also had them firing over the top of the pile house. Uh, if I was captain of that ship and they were firing those huge guns over the top of my head, I'd have some words with them. Uh, that did not happen. They would have taken the, the pile house apart. When they discovered the monitor, the monitor, when it capsized, went down stern first, rolled over, and the turret fell off. The turret was held on basically by gravity, just like modern turrets are. The coal bunkers were beneath it. The turret filled up with coal. So when they brought this up several years ago, they had to start. All right, can everybody see the guns now? If you can see the uh, wheel on the right hand side of the carriage, that's a braking wheel. The carriage is upside down. You see those fence plates sticking up? They would actually, uh, by turning the wheel, it squeeze into oak 4 by 4s on the deck of the turret. This is a braking mechanism. These guys had <coughs> tremendous recoil. You didn't want to fire them and blow them out the backside of the turret. That wouldn't work. So before the monitor came down from New York, they decided to go out and test the gun. Because these, this is all new technology to them. So the gun captain, trying to figure out which way to turn the wheel, says, oh, well, I guess this is right. To break the gun, so he turns the wheel, so he thinks it's right. He says, fire! The gun goes off, the cannon flies across the turret, bangs into the other side of the turret, leaves a big dent out. 